Hello again everybody and something a little bit different today in my series of mini lectures. So uh, I'm turning away from uh, historical narrative, turning away from individuals and this time I'm going to do uh, first off a few about birds and the first bird I'm going to uh, talk about is the eagle, not surprisingly, the king of the birds. Now in Rome's history uh, the eagle first comes to prominence in the story of Romulus and Remus. Uh, there was dispute over who was going to be king and indeed over which of the hills they were going to build uh, their new city on and so uh, they both claimed uh, divine inspiration because they had received messages by the sign of birds. Romulus claimed that he'd seen 12 eagles which had appeared from Jupiter and Remus said that he'd seen six eagles but his had appeared much earlier and so it should be his choice and this was actually at the root of the problem uh, which ended up with one of them killing the other and so Romulus uh, killed Remus and thus Rome was called Rome and not Reem. But it's interesting that eagles were right in there uh, at the very start of Rome. And maybe that's why the eagle uh, has such a part to play in the iconography of the Roman, em uh, Roman Republic and the Roman Empire subsequently after that. The eagle had always been a symbol of power and authority and that goes back to perhaps to its Greek antecedents when the eagle was a symbol of Zeus the king of the gods and Jupiter or Jove his Roman equivalent. Um, it was always carried as an army standard. The eagle of each legion was a sacred emblem. It was carried basically on a pole at the head of the army and it was the ultimate disgrace to lose the symbol and soul almost of your legion and people would fight uh, right to the uh, last degree in order to preserve their eagle. Famously this happened uh, when Caesar was invading Britain, uh, his eagle carrier, when the troops were not all that keen to uh, get off the boats and fight against the British waiting on the shore, uh, he, the eagle carrier jumped out of the boat and said right well I'm going ahead and you lads a better follow me to keep the eagle and indeed that's what actually saved the day. Um, Eagles were famously lost at different points in Rome, Rome's history, especially in 53 BC when uh, Crassus at the head of a, several legions lost a number of standards and eagles uh, to the Parthians under Mithridates. And Mithridates clearly knew the value of these things because he kept them and these were used in negotiations with the Romans much, much later, 30 odd years later, uh, and he exacted a decent price for them uh, when eventually they were returned after negotiations with Augustus in uh, around 20 BC and those that was so important to Augustus that that was uh, portrayed in sculpture on the famous Prima Porta statue on the breastplate thereof. So then uh, in uh, mythology almost uh, we have the story of the Eagle of the Ninth, the famous Rosemary Sutcliffe book uh, written in I think the 1950s, certainly made into two films, it was the basis of two films in, in recent times, one called uh, The Eagle, uh, funnily enough, and the other Centurion, but uh, The Eagle was the idea that uh, the, e the Ninth Legion in Britain had somehow uh, got in a battle with uh, the Celtic tribes and had lost its eagle and later on um, was this was such a disgrace that the the ninth legion was disbanded actually that's probably not quite true but it's a great uh, basis for a story and does represent a single truth about rome and the eagle which is that the eagle is fundamental to rome's idea of itself um, in recent times there was a, a spectacular archaeological discovery at the bottom of a ditch uh, in the city of London and one of the best eagles that's uh, ever been found anywhere from the Roman Empire carved uh, in Cotswold stone uh, showed a Roman imperial eagle with a snake in its beak and that was presumably supposed to show the, the supremacy and the authority of Rome and it was, it was quite a size now in the Museum of London uh, but showed right in the first century how important eagles were in, in showing in, in the Romans saying what they wanted to about themselves. There are also stories of eagles being um, somehow encased in wax images uh, which were placed on ceremonial funeral pies and when the wax melted uh, like it did in Cambridge Latin, uh, Cambridge Latin Book 2 
uh, and an eagle magically flies out, uh, representing the soul of the Emperor Claudius. And so uh, there are number, two or three examples of that uh, in Roman history supposedly happening. I've always wondered how that would actually work. If you've got a presumably terrified eagle uh, encased in um, encased in wax, that's going to get quite nervous. It's also not going to go so well if, if melted wax gets on its, its wings. Still, that uh, seems to have been what actually happened. And that idea of the eagle as the soul of an emperor is also to be seen on the underneath of the Arch of Titus in Rome. Um, the Arch of Titus uh, was built to celebrate the achievements of Titus, the Roman general and later emperor, uh, in capturing Jerusalem. Uh, and there's the, the, all the treasures from the Temple of Jerusalem shown on some of the sculpture, but also on there is the deification of the emperor. And it shows an eagle arising out of, uh, out of the, the figure of Titus. So clearly uh, the Romans understood the eagle to be a symbol of the soul of the emperor, perhaps indeed the soul of uh, the empire itself. How has this got to, what's this got to do with the modern day? Well, there's quite a lot of flags uh, which have um, the eagle as part of them. Uh, the German flag, uh, it was uh, a particular sort of uh, icon was devised by the Nazis, but uh, the, e the eagle uh, has a much longer history than that. It's uh, part of the Polish flag. It goes back to a story about uh, a Polish emperor or king seeing an eagle surrounded by sunlight and that was incorporated uh, into the Polish flag. Um, it's, or it was also for many years the symbol of the Holy Roman Empire, uh, which ruled uh, a large part of Western York for a very long time. Why do they bother doing all this? Well, partly they want to associate themselves with the idea of Rome and pa the power of the Roman Empire. Why did Rome want to do it? It's because they wanted it, it was a king of the birds, they wanted that to symbolise power. So our modern countries, which want to associate themselves with the eagle, really they're looking back to Jupiter and Zeus and classical symbols of power.